Hi, it's Steph, and we're at the Home Depot. And I'm looking for a new house plant so that I can do some indoor gardening over the next couple of winter months. So let's take a look and see what they have in their inventory for January 2023. fairly new to house plants, only recently getting into them over the last couple of years. But as I go along, I'm going to share with you the plants that I know to be very low maintenance and very easy for beginners like myself. But right here in this section, they typically have these smaller plants and these smaller ones are less expensive. So if you are newer to house plants, this would be a good plant size to try. They're about 548 and um, there's quite a selection here and this particular one says it's low light which in my case is great because i don't have a ton of light in my home there's only about two rooms where i have some windows with some light this one's beautiful it's called a neon pothos and it is a low light plant and it looks like it would have a trailing habit really pretty vibrant yellow color against this green some ivy while I would never plant ivy in the garden because of its invasive nature, it could make a really pretty trailing hanging plant. So this one is called Garland Ivy. And this one is also in that 548 price range. In a small, I want to say this looks like maybe a three to four inch container, not much bigger than that. These have a cool fuzzy texture. And what are these guys? Let's see. Moon Valley Friendship Plant, Pilia mollis. And it's also a low light plant in 548. This silvery one is gorgeous. This one says, my friends call me Rex, a Begonia Rex. And this one is a medium light plant. Look how cool that is. It has like a swirl pattern. This one's also really pretty. Let's see, this one's called a Sandriana or Dracaena. I do have a, a Dracaena. It's more green. This one is a variegated foliage. Really pretty. And then here's some more colorful foliage. I think just like a garden outdoors, having very colorful foliage in your indoor house plants make really interesting arrangements. So here is a peace lily. And these for me have been really easy to grow. Typically you get these as a memorial plant. And if you get these in memory of someone, um, a lot of times that's how we end up with these, right? Um, in any case, these are really easy, low maintenance, low light plants. And one of the first plants that I had as a house plant. Now these do send out some white bloom stalks, although mine has never really done that. I think I've gotten one bloom the whole time that I've had my peace lily. And the good thing about these for a beginner is that they will tell you when they need water because the foliage will start to droop. And so that's a good sign to know when it's time to water these guys. Something I've learned with house plants is you're almost better off airing on the side of less water versus more water um, because I have certainly killed my fair share of house plants with too much watering. Here they have some ferns and while I really do enjoy the texture of ferns and I quite enjoy them outside in the summer, I have to say that as a house plant they can be really finicky because they need humidity. So unless you have a humidifier going in the house, um, a pebble tray underneath that can have some stones with some water to provide humidity, and also grouping your plants together provides them some humidity. Otherwise these will always be crispy and dropping foliage. If you have a different experience, go ahead and comment below so that we can learn from one another. Now these beauties here are called Calatheas and I currently have a pink one. It's called a pink Calathea at home. Actually, I see some in the back there that I'm gonna show you. And that is the one that is not doing well for me. And it is such a beautiful plant, but in my opinion, they're not exactly beginner. I would call them a, you know, a moderate plant person plant. 
because once you've had some experience because it's it's being a little bit difficult I don't know if it needs more water or less water um, it's starting to crisp up and die on me and I'm not happy about it but look how beautiful this one is So this is a Calathea and it's a six inch pot and it's $14.98 grown by Costa and it's a Vigoro plant, medium light. This beauty is the one that I have. It has this, you know, also the pink underside with this really pretty pink veining on the outside of the foliage or on the top of the foliage. It's gorgeous but it is not happy in my home for some reason. This one is called Calathea Dotty. Um, I wanna say mine was called Pink Star, but I could be wrong. It looks exactly like this. And this one here, let's see how much these containers are. They are $19.98. While really beautiful, um, it would probably take a little bit of research to figure out how to keep these plants happy. Here's another finicky one in my book, the um, Fiddly Fig. Um, I do have one that I had bought on clearance for $5 at Lowe's uh, a year ago. It did beautifully all summer long outside with our summer humidity. But as soon as I brought it in, a lot of the foliage started getting brown um, and crisping. And I think it's because, again, like ferns, these like some level of humidity. And I have a pretty dry home with some forced hot air heat. And so um, I have been running the humidifier on it for um, a few weeks now. I'll do it like one of the days of the week. I'll let it kind of run and give it some humidity. But it's, it's definitely not looking the greatest but they are really pretty and have become quite popular. So this size container here, again, they look to be about an eight inch pot. It isn't an insert. You can change them out with better potting soil once you get home. Um, this one, at least they're not overwatering it. It's feeling a bit dry. Um, and these like to dry out between waterings from what I've read. And this one here is 1998 and it is a little fiddle. So these don't seem to get as tall as some of the fiddle leaf figs. And it says that it's um, high light, water when the top inch of soil dries, keep above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's a QR code that you can scan for more information about this plant. These are also by uh, Costa Farms, which I find to be a big vendor for these house plants at the Home Depot. This one looks like Swiss cheese, right? So this one, let's see what it's called. This one does not have a name. Um, it's either some kind of philodendron will be my best guess. So let me know what you think. Really cool looking though, right? I picked up one of these Birkins last year and I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's called a Birkin philodendron. And this one here, is medium to high light water when the top inch of soil dries keep above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and um, so far mine's doing well so that's pretty exciting and here we are at my second favorite easy plant for beginner house plant people and that is the snake plant or Sensiviria, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I have killed my fair share of these in the beginning. And the reason for that was because I overwatered. Well, guess what? These are so low care and low maintenance. They like low to medium light and you pretty much just have to water them about once a month. And not even a ton, just a little watering once a month and that is enough to keep these guys happy. And so if I can find a small one for an eight inch pot that I have, that is gonna be what I pick up today. These here are in a large container. Uh, they look to be maybe a 10 inch container. And the good thing about these is that you can just take them and plop them right in maybe a 11 or 12 inch decorative pot at home. And you have an instant full grown plant for $26.98. And check it out, they have some proven winners house plants. So this one here is called a Sweet Dreams Amagris. Um, it looks like a type of Calathea or like prayer plant almost with the shape of the foliage. It has this really pretty sagey green with a darker green veining and a burgundy on the underside of the plant. So these are small containers. It looks like there is a liner in there. 
there is not a liner. It's planted, no there is, it's just a bit dry so it popped right out. But there is a liner in there so you would wanna probably repot these. Also these decorative containers do not have drain holes. So you could use the liner, just put some fresh potting soil in there and maybe add some gravel at the bottom and then sit it back inside to facilitate drainage. The good thing about these containers without the drain holes is that you don't need a catch um, a saucer underneath for water, especially if you're placing it on a, a table that you don't want to damage. Um, but the thing is you have to be careful about not letting it sit in too much water. So this one here is called a ficus elastica. These are really pretty, and I've been interested in these for quite some time. Look at the color of this foliage. Beautiful, and it has like a rubbery texture. Let's see how much these are. Can't seem to find a price tag, but we're gonna figure it out. Here's another really beautiful ficus. It has really shiny leaves. Now, I have hard water at home, so if you wanted to spray these, you'd probably end up with those, like, what looks like salt water spots. So you probably just want to take a damp cloth with maybe a little bit of, like, bottled water and uh, wipe down the foliage once in a while. But here's the price on these. They are $19.98. A little bit high in my opinion, but they are proven winners, so could be a higher quality plant if you look at it like that. And they have a whole section of hanging planters. And you know what's come into fashion is those really pretty crochet macrame type hangers. They would be so pretty to insert one of these plants in and hang it in a sunny spot in your home. I really like those a lot. But of all of these hanging plants, my number three pick for super easy house plant is this golden pothos. I have one of these and I've propagated it a ton, which is really easy to do. Um, you just cut it at a leaf node, stick it in some water, and before any time you'll have a new plant star. These are super easy. So those are my top three picks for house plants today. The, for, for easy anyway, for a beginner gardener, would be the peace lily, the snake plant, and this golden pothos as a trailer. So these containers here are, they look to be a six inch and they are $15.98. The house plant prices have definitely gone up, that is for sure. Here's another one of those neon pothos. Now this one is much bigger than the other one we saw for $5.98. And this is, it looks like a eight inch container. And these are $19.98. And there are a couple other really beautiful hanging trailing plants that I'm going to show you. Starting with this Maranta or player, uh, prayer plant. Look how gorgeous this is. Such a beautiful plant. It's said that these leaves curl up in the evening and it kind of looks like prayer hands when the hands are when the leaves are closed and so this one here is a low light plant. It's called Maricela prayer plant. My full name is Maranta Licunera, and it's from Brazil. This is a gorgeous one, and look how full that is. See how much that is. $19.98. This would make a wonderful gift as a housewarming. If you have someone that just recently moved into a home, maybe they don't have too many house plants. Look how pretty that is. Here's an ivy that is already pretty big and trailing. I mean, you can't go wrong with these big ones because they really do provide instant impact. Imagine that sitting on top of a cabinet or a bookcase, trailing down. So pretty. And here is one that I recently added to my own collection, and this one is a silver pothos. Look how beautiful this foliage is. It sparkles and it literally looks silver. Has a velvety texture, really beautiful. And this is an eight inch, this is a six inch hanger and it's $15.98. Here's another beautiful begonia. This one definitely needs some water. That's one thing you should be careful about when you're looking at plants at these home improvement stores. The prices are definitely reasonable for the size plant that you get, but two things you wanna check. You wanna see if it's either overwatered or underwatered. 
kind of check out the general condition and health of the plant and look around for any flying bugs. You don't want to bring home a fungus gnat infestation uh, or spider mites, etc., especially if you already have a collection of house plants. But this one is beautiful. Look at all that color. Beautiful way to create an indoor garden. They also have a large collection of cactus, which, I mean, you can't get any easier than that, right? They basically require no water and are also really interesting. Cactus, even succulents. They have some succulent varieties here. That is a, a Cheveria Loves Fire. That's $24.98, which I don't know if this is the going rate for these types of plants, but it's pretty big. It just doesn't look to be in the best condition. This is a really cool, funky looking one from far away. It could look like an overgrown rosemary. And that is a Euphorbia Briar Patch. $24.98. They do have some really cool ones. Look at this one. Really cool. What's this guy called? That is a Mangave Barney. And it is $24.98. See that? There's a little bug flying around. So that's what you need to be careful about. And then there's this cool guy. Look at this. So cool. And this one is an aloe T Rex. This is a real pretty one, too. This is a philodendron Brazil, and it has a really pretty um, heart shaped leaf with this bright yellow in the center. That is the characteristic of this plant, is it typically has a green leaf with a splash of bright yellow. And then this one's a cool one too. I think this is a type of Photonia. I'm actually pretty sure that that's what it is, although there isn't a tag on this one. Now I've had one of these ferns before, these little button ferns, and look how cute they are. They're adorable, but it, it crisped up on me in no time inside with the lack of humidity that I have. Now this just has a generic tag, so it doesn't tell you what type of plant it is. Um, I just know because I've had one before. And this is an eight inch hanger for $16.98. They also have a bunch of smaller succulents and in my store here in Massachusetts zone 6B, they're on a special buy. Um, some of these succulents in aloe vera, three for $12 or $4 each. And look at these cute little terracotta pots. These are four inch petite terracotta for $5.98. Again, makes a really good little housewarming gift. One of these with a bottle of wine and you're good to go. And this is also a really pretty uh, pothos. This is a trailing one. Um, and let me see if it has the name on it. This is low light, which is what I like about these because it doesn't matter if you have a little light or a lot of light, they'll still do well. And um, it doesn't say the name of it. The habit varies because it can grow upright like this or it can trail as it gets older and puts on some more length. Now the thing with these trailing plants is if they do get more light, they tend to have a better trailing habit. If they get less light, then the um, foliage is a bit sparse on the piece that trails. I know that much, so hopefully that information is a bit helpful to you. This is another really easy plant. It's called a money tree. And this actually makes a great gift for someone if, uh, you know, again, if they move into a new home or if they start a new business. And these are pretty low fuss. I have one um, that's doing really well. And all it requires is, look at this, a couple of ice cubes a week. So it doesn't need a ton of water to keep it happy. And they generally grow pretty fast. These have a really beautiful terracotta container. It doesn't have a drain hole, so it has a liner inside. So again, you can repot it if you'd like, or leave it in here. I generally find they do okay in their soil that they come from the store in for a, for a while. And then when they're actively growing in the spring and summer or in the warmer months, you can go ahead and repot them into either a bigger container or into some fresh soil. And this one also reads to be a low light plant. And let's see how much this is. These are $16.98, which is a little expensive for the size plant, but it has a decorative 
container and so that will drive the price up a little bit. And while I don't have one of these yet, these are also said to be pretty beginner friendly house plants. This is a ZZ plant and it has a rubbery texture and um, the shiny foliage has an upright habit and they come in this green color and I've also seen them in a dark version. Now this one here, while a really cool looking plant um, can be toxic to pets, it's some kind of um, palm, like a sago palm, I believe. Yep, it is. And so this one needs bright light. So if you do have pets, you would always want to obviously, you know, do a Google search and find out whether or not the plant that you're interested in is toxic to your, um, to either children or pets and so forth. This is a cool one. It's called a ponytail palm and it has a really cool and unruly top, um, like a ponytail on top of this trunk here. That one's also $14.98. So cool. I like these and these are pretty low maintenance too from when I was researching low maintenance low light plants this one also came up as an option a ponytail palm and if you still want to grow some amaryllis they are 50% off while supplies last here at my store still have a few left and they're sprouting in their box here's one that I really like it's an alocasia and I love the foliage and it's one that I hope to add at some point look at that And it looks like this alocasia is a medium light plant. Avoid cold drafts and maintain moderately moist soil. Really pretty, I really, really like these. Many of the plants that they have, they also have in the larger size. So here are some big fiddle leaf figs and some big peace lilies. See, those are the flowers that they generally put on. Maybe they just need to be a certain size before they start putting on these blooms. But really pretty. And there's some more large ZZ plants. And this is another plant that I have. Actually, my neighbor gave me some of hers. And it's a type of Monstera. And it also takes on these cuts in the leaves that are really interesting as the foliage or the leaf gets larger. Really pretty. Mine has been really low maintenance and it's doing really well. Look how beautiful this leaf is. Very tropical looking. And this one is a medium house plant, medium light house plant. And some cyclamen, some really large bowls here. These are some 12 inch bowls of cyclamen. They have white and this orchid, orchid pink. I think that's what you would call that, like an orchid pink or purple. White and a fuchsia, almost a hint of red to that. But look how beautiful this foliage is really beautiful and these are $24.98 now here in my zone 6b they are not hardy but my friend Janie in California can grow these as outside plants in her zone 9b really pretty some anthurium these are really popular around the holidays as well and these are $12.98 have really pretty shiny foliage with this red bloom and yellow stamen but look at the foliage on the cyclamen absolutely beautiful and I'm happy to report that the seeds are in so seed starting season is in effect not only do they have tons of seeds they also have some seed starting supplies in so let me show you those I'll just do a quick pan down the uh, flower seeds so that you can maybe take a look and see if there's anything that piques your interest. That looks like a really cool Cosmo, a seashells mixed. And there was a cool looking um, Zinnia Oklahoma mixed that looks really pretty Some herbs and veggies
and some of the burpee organics. Look at this combo where you get a Dracaena at the top and a trailing pothos at the bottom. Really cool arrangement. And these are $34.98. And these like bright light. This is that golden pothos that I said was a really easy beginner friendly trailing plant. And here are the seed starting supplies. So they have these Jiffy greenhouse kits. Now, if there's one thing I would recommend if you are indoor seed starting, um, maybe you've had a good experience with these. And if you have, you can share below. But these peat pellets, I don't think do the greatest job at um, keeping your seeds happy. I find that they dry out super fast. And if you overwater them, they grow algae really quickly. At least that has been my experience. And here are the peat pellets. I know Callie Kim on her gardening channel, she does a lot of vegetable gardening. She uses a lot of these pea pellets, so maybe you can get some more information on her channel about those, but um, not something that I've liked. I also don't really love these pots, because they say that they're biodegradable, but I feel like they just kind of fall apart a little, but not enough where they break down all the way. Um, it's just been my experience. But the pea pellets are a packet of 36 for 4.98. And these, you get the tray with the dome, the humidity dome, a packet of Super Thrive fertilizer, some tags, and the pea pellets, and they're $19.98 for 36 Now this is something I would use. This, you get 18 pots. They look to be a small three inch, maybe four inch pot doesn't say um, but you would put your own seed starting mix in there and those are 628 so if you just need some plastic pots to start some seeds in that could be a good option you could also just use plain old plastic cups with some drain holes in them um, anything that you recycle yogurt containers and so forth are also pretty green and um, would be a good option they have these little ones if you wanted to do some things on the windowsill um, again remember these do require a little bit more maintenance um, some Super Thrive. I've actually never seen that in a bottle before. But this is supposed to be a um, fertilizer for all stages of growth. Some soil tests. Look at this. If you're getting the itch to grow some veggies inside or some flowers, some kits. A mushroom grow kit, a lavender grow kit, and there are the prices. And a heat mat. So if you do start indoor um, seeds, these things would be helpful. So a heat mat for anything that requires bottom heat. I know in my experience, peppers typically need bottom heat, also some flowers. And that is $29.98 and you get a 10 by 20 inch mat. And then they also have some grow lights, and this one says that it fits over a 10 by 20 tray. So if you pick up one of those trays, this should fit right above it, and that is $45.98. But you can also do some DIY light setups with some shop lights, um, and there's a lot of information on YouTube about that. But if you wanted to just pick some things up and get going, they have plenty of seed starting supplies here. There's a 72 cell um, self watering kit, which is pretty interesting, and that is $19.98. So I hope that you've enjoyed checking out the inventory in January at the Home Depot of the house plants and vegetables and flower seeds and all of the seeds starting supplies that you'll need to get going for this gardening season. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. And please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we'll see you soon.